In our last video, we showed you how Canada has become one of the fastest growing countries in the world and some of the challenges this poses to its major cities, particularly in terms of eroding housing affordability. Today, we're taking a step back to see where its major cities rank internationally and to turn our attention to some of its global peers. In a world where the dream of home ownership seems increasingly out of reach for many, the 2023 Demographia International Housing Affordability Study sheds light on the state of global housing markets, including the least and most affordable cities for housing around the globe. Conducted by the Urban Reform Institute and the Frontier Center for Public Policy, the study assesses housing affordability in 94 major markets across eight nations, which largely represent those in the global Anglosphere or English-speaking world. The assessment makes use of the median multiple, a price to income ratio, to measure how many years of median household income it would take to buy a median priced home and ranks each market accordingly. Starting our journey on a more hopeful note, we'll begin by exploring the top 10 most affordable housing markets identified by the study, all of which happen to be located in the United States. Tied for 10th and 9th most affordable are Louisville, Kentucky and Tulsa, Oklahoma, each with a median multiple of 3.9. In other words, for just under four years' worth of household income, you can set down roots in the American heartland. Number eight, Detroit, Michigan. While Detroit is working on its comeback from decades of economic decline and urban decay, it remains affordable with a score of 3.8. Number seven, Buffalo, New York. With just 3.7 years of income, you can live near one of the great natural wonders of the world while owning a piece of the chicken wing capital of the world. Tied for 6th and 5th place with scores of 3.6 are Cincinnati, Ohio and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, where as a new resident you can enjoy a jaunt through Cincinnati's historic Over the Rhine neighborhood or channel your inner cowboy at Oklahoma's National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Tied for 4th and 3rd most affordable at 3.5, Cleveland, Ohio and St. Louis, Missouri boast vibrant communities where dreams of homeownership are still within reach, as are regular visits to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the tallest man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere. Number 2, Rochester, New York. Rochester shines with a score of 3.2, offering access at an affordable price to beautiful green spaces like the Frederick Law Olmsted designed Highland Park and its annual Lilac Festival. And number 1, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Leading the pack with a median multiple of 3.1, or in other words, a median housing cost of roughly three years worth of median household income, the city of Bridges offers an attractive opportunity for prospective home buyers as the most affordable city for housing in demographia's global ranking. Now, to provide a bit more context on the U.S. housing market, despite representing the top 10 most affordable cities on this ranking, housing affordability in the U.S. has been declining in recent years. The study notes that the median multiple for the U.S. as a whole climbed from 3.9 in 2019 to 5 in 2022, or a jump equivalent to 1.1 years of household income. This increase was attributed to pandemic-induced increases in housing demand, which was a trend we touched on in one of our previous videos. It also meant that by 2022, the number of markets categorized as severely unaffordable in the U.S. nearly doubled to 26 cities, up from 14 cities just three years earlier. And so, with that in mind, let's delve into the study's 10 least affordable cities for housing. Starting at number 10, Toronto, Canada. As we saw in our last video, affordability has been eroding in Toronto for over a decade, and now homeownership in Canada's largest and most diverse city will set you back 9.5 years of median household income. Number 9, Melbourne, Australia. At a score of 9.9, .9, the cultural vibrancy of Australia's second largest city is matched only by its price tag, decades worth of household income. Number 8, San Francisco, California. As the US's original poster child for counterculture and tech innovation, the pressure on San Francisco's housing market produces a median multiple of 10.7. Number 7, Auckland, New Zealand. A home in New Zealand's largest city, the scenic city of sales, will cost you 10.8 years of income. Number 6, Los Angeles, California. In the US's second largest city and the entertainment capital of the world, a home will run you 11.3 years of median household income. Number 5, San Jose, California. The heart of Silicon Valley has a median multiple of 11.5, reflecting the high cost of living in a global tech hub. Number 4, Honolulu, Hawaii. A slice of paradise in the heart of the Pacific Rim comes at a price of 11.8 years of household income. Number 3, Vancouver, Canada. 
This city's breathtaking nature, multiculturalism, and temperate climate, at least by Canadian standards, make it a desirable yet challenging market for many. A home in Vancouver requires 12 years of household income. Number 2. Sydney, Australia The media multiple of Australia's largest city, where stunning natural beauty, world-famous landmarks, and a high quality of life meet soaring housing prices, is 13.3. And at number 1, Hong Kong, China. With a median multiple of a staggering 18.8 points, Hong Kong's affordability surprisingly saw a year-over-year -year improvement, but has remained the least affordable market over the 12 years demography has included it in its study, reflecting the extreme challenge of purchasing a home in this densely populated financial hub. So why are the housing markets of these cities so unaffordable? Well, the study suggests that a primary contributor to unaffordable housing is the imposition of artificial restrictions on the supply of residential land by governments, leading to a limited availability of land for development. These restrictions, often part of urban containment policies like urban growth boundaries or green belts, are said to significantly drive up the cost of land. As a result, the study argues, even with moderate demand, the restricted land supply inflates housing prices beyond the reach of lower and middle income households, exacerbating wealth inequality as housing becomes a larger portion of household expenses. The study emphasizes that addressing housing affordability requires reforms that restore competitive land markets and avoid policies that limit the availability of developable land. However, a cursory glance at the study's results suggest other factors may be at play. For example, the 10 most affordable markets are mostly located within the American Northeast and Midwest, otherwise known as the former Rust Belt. This is an area that was characterized by industrial decline, population loss, and urban decay over the latter part of the 20th century, with Detroit typically serving as a prime example of this trend. And while many of these cities have since managed to restructure themselves, they've undergone significant economic challenges and transition that continue to echo into today and may continue to moderate market forces in these centers. On the flip side, for the 10 least affordable markets, they're almost all located around the Pacific Rim, and, as we'll look more closely at in a future video, they've nearly all seen an influx of offshore capital into their housing markets for over a decade, most notably from an economically surging China. The only geographic exception here is Toronto. However, Toronto, not unlike many of the other least affordable cities, has a high percentage of foreign-born residents and, for a city so far from the Pacific, has a population that is over one-third Asian ancestry. As a result, Toronto has similarly seen significant levels of foreign, particularly Chinese investment in the real estate market for many years, which has been a factor tied to housing price escalation. And so from Pittsburgh to Hong Kong, the demographia study highlights the diversity of global housing affordability, as well as how the quest for adequate housing remains an ongoing concern for many cities worldwide. So what do you think? Are you surprised by any of the cities at either end of the affordability spectrum? Do you think there are other key factors influencing their affordability than those suggested by the study? Do you feel the global housing situation will be improving anytime soon, or is it poised to get worse? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and if you enjoyed today's video, please tell us by hitting like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.